<laughs> it's too early. <sighs> okay. Uh, hi. And welcome to the q and I need coffee. <laughs> Welcome back to another q and A. I I asked you to send in your questions on social media. If you're not following me, you're there already where we post the things to let you know that we're doing a QA. and I'm gonna put a graphic or a thing down here and you can go ahead and follow me there and then you can participate in next time's Q&A. Yeah, so today you get me fresh out of bed. I haven't washed, I haven't done anything. Um, yeah, I feel like I shouldn't be apologizing for that because like you know on this channel, you have seen me at a lot worse you know? Also, this is a gorgeous face, so like, whatever. Before we get into it, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn that bell on so that you are, you know, notified for when we post the videos and stuff. Okay, let's get straight into it. Uh, how do you do it? Love, you look so beautiful every day. You're truly amazing. Thank you. Can I just say that that message coming through just after I woke up and reading it now, Thank you, babes. I appreciate you. I don't know how I do it. Like, it's just, it's just my face, I guess. <laughs> Please respond to my DMs. Listen here, if you are sliding into my DMs with hi and hey, and I'd like to get to know you, you can get to know me here. I post so much content, like on this channel. Like, I share so much of my life with all of you already. Like, I, I, I really cannot reply to every hi in the DMs. Like, no offense, but like, you know? How do you manage to keep on coming up with ideas for content? Um, so somebody actually also asked me this like in person in the week. And I think one of the things that's interesting about this channel when we first sort of started it, it was very sort of heavily information based, right? And so the first initial videos that I put out were very sort of practical things about, you know, how do you change your name? How do you administer an HRT shot? How has that affected my body? What can you expect from it? And so a lot of that content had been information based. And after doing a couple of words about that, one of the things that I realized is that while that information is incredibly helpful to a lot of people, it wasn't the kind of content that I wanted to make. I've always been interested in storytelling, you know, telling human stories, narrative stories. That's always been something that's interested me. And so as a way to do that here on YouTube, I started vlogging, which has been the best idea like ever. Because a lot of the creative decisions about what content to post actually sort of comes out of my sort of day to day, right? So in the vlog, while it is, I guess, focused on a particular topic, and I do think about that a little bit ahead of time, the vlog structure allows me to shape that narrative in a sort of um, story form, which I think has worked out pretty well so far, which is a long-winded way of saying, I don't think about the content too much, I just go and shoot and see what narrative comes out of the vlog during that day. Yeah. What's been a moment this year that stands out for you from the rest? and why i mean they've been like a few right but there are sort of two or three that stand out for me firstly the one is getting the funding to shoot the film that we're about to shoot because it is that was in, that was incredible so if you are new to the channel we got funding to shoot a feature documentary film about trans lives in south africa and we are shooting that later this year and it is going to be I think the first of its kind on the African continent in South Africa so I am very very excited to be directing that film so like that was one of the standout moments for me hands down and I think the other sort of significant moment for me is a little bit more personal and that has to do with some of the relationships that I have formed and nurtured and developed over this last year maybe or so. I mean, it's been a long time coming with friendships and relationships and stuff, but I'm at a point in my life now where I feel like I found my family and that's, that's a very, very rare thing for me at least in my life. So I am deeply, 
deeply grateful to those people that are close to me and stuff. Like I love all of you so damn much. You bring me like so much freaking happiness and you are all amazing. Tell us more about Zane. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, babes. Um, <laughs> Like Zane and I met in, I think it was 20, 2018. So we've been together for like four years now. Um, we met on Tinder and we were sort of going to be friends uh, initially when we met and then we sort of eventually saw each other and went out for what was supposed to be a very platonic date. And that turned out to be very much not the case. I mean, I look, I always feel weird about talking about other people when they're not here because they can't, you know, consent to the things that I'm telling the entire universe about them without their approval first then. So yeah, that is what I can tell you about Zane right now. Go and watch the other vlogs and stuff. Zane is like in so many of them and you can get to know Zane a little bit more over there. How do you navigate being poly? Like how does that conversation start and what sparked it? Um, Look, let, wait, first, let me say that I cannot speak for like all poly people. Like I can just speak to my experience. And my experience had been that the conversation around being poly was a very organic process. So I guess it's one of those things that you come into your own after a period of time. And I think the same was true for me when I sort of came out as trans. And so there's a language and there's a way of understanding and articulating your feelings about stuff that allows you to access different experiences or act upon them in a particular way. And for me, that had been very, very true. I've always never been strictly monogamous. Um, I've been in sort of open relationships. I've been in sort of poly relationships. And so that, I think, was a natural evolution about... Uh, the nature of myself, the nature of the relationship that I had with my person as well. I think a lot of the conversations that I have been in with people around um, being polyamorous and being in polyamorous relationships have, have sort of come from a place of how does one communicate that and how do you make the space safe and okay to be able to communicate that idea without necessarily losing your person, without necessarily losing that relationship that you have with them. And it, kind of boils down to just that like you have to be able to communicate and i don't mean just like oh babes how was your day kind of vibes and i'm talking about like really communicating about how you are feeling internally about the very intimate nature of yourself of your romantic relationships and so being able to articulate that to your partner is absolutely critical if you are already in a relationship and wanting to see or date other people. And I think you've been consistently communicating about stuff with your partner in dialogue, in conversation with your partner about it. I think that you automatically generate a space that is safe and a space of understanding so that you're able to say the things that you need to. In fact, if you are in a relationship where you feel that you are unable to tell your partner something intimate about yourself, that is more an issue around you and your partner's relationship rather than it being about the thing that you're wanting to communicate, if that makes sense. So yeah, being able to talk through stuff and talk through things respectfully and I guess openly and vulnerably is, at least for me, was part of that process. We had our pride parade today here in Washington, D.C. I brought my daughter. It was a great day with friends. Happy pride. Oh, that sounds so freaking amazing. Oh, I would love to go to pride in the U.S. at some point in my life. Like, I feel like I need to experience that. I'm glad you had a great time. I started estradiol on Friday. It's been oral and my skin feels super dry and dull. Did the injection soften your skin? Or did you experience the same issue with injections? Um, wow, like that was like a while ago um, since I started HRT. I think I've been on hormones for like five or six years now, I think. One of the first things that I remember about going on hormones, I think after about like three, four-ish months, my skin did start to soften quite a bit. So there was a change in the sort of in like the sort of like texture of my skin. I don't know how to describe that, 
but um, my skin got like really really soft and my face I, I stopped getting like pimples and like you know that kind of thing like my skin has cleared up like look at this like so so much like I haven't had pimples in like forever so estradiol really did the damn things for me uh, in terms of my skin so if since taking those pills are starting to impact your skin and making it sort of dry and dull um, maybe that's something to just keep an eye on and then speak to your uh, physician about that and just keep them in the loop as to what's happening so that they can also monitor it so that they know you know what's happening to your body and stuff you know maybe after a period of time that dullness will sort of disappear um, you've only just started it so usually these things take months not days or weeks to sort of develop an impact on your body so i would say give it time but keep your doctor in the loop about that with the estradiol pills i've had no breast growth and does the injection work better than the pills in terms of breast growth um look when i was on the pills which i was for about let's say three ish years um, I had some breast growth, it was really, really slow um, at a point, uh, but it was very steady, if that makes sense. So I did develop some boobs. And to be very, very honest with you, my breast growth on hormone replacement therapy has been really, really great. And that is, I guess, part of a consequence of my body. Like everybody's body is going to be different and everybody is going to, I guess, respond to hormone replacement therapy differently. But because of the type of body that I have, like I hold on to like weight really, really easily. And so part of my breast development, I think, is a consequence of my body type. So now different people are going to respond uh, to the hormones differently. And some people might have really great uh, breast growth and really good maturation on their breast development. And some people won't. And that's perfectly okay. Like, you know, some people have like small boobs, some people have big boobs, some people have different shaped boobs. Like, this is all part of, you know, human bodily diversity, I guess. So for me personally, the decision to move from the pills to the injection was out of a space of uh, sort of health risks around that. Um, the pills have a tendency to, I guess, generate sort of other kind of side effects, you know, putting you more at risk for things like uh, DVT. Uh, at a point, the pills were impacting my eyesight, so that wasn't great. And then I moved over to the injection, and then suddenly when I did that, um, that also, I guess, kick-started my breast growth as well, and then also helped a little bit with um, feminizing the shape of my body and fat redistribution. I can never say those two words together properly, fat redistribution. You see? Fat redistribution. So just because I've had that experience moving from the pills to the injection doesn't mean that you will have that same experience. That said, a lot of people swear by the injection. A lot of people have had incredibly positive results on the injection as opposed to the pills. So if you can and you are able to do it, I would suggest that maybe you speak to your physician about it and see if that is something that is an option for you and then maybe try that and see if you're getting, I guess, better results on it. Hope that's helpful. So what is the proper medication to take with your estrogen? I've been on estrogen for a year now, but I haven't seen the breast tissue growth yet. Okay, so this person is responding to a message on the video that we did with Dr. Anastasia Thompson, who spoke about progesterone in great detail and its role in, I guess, HRT and feminization for trans women specifically. And so really that video came about because a lot of people had been saying to me that they had been on progesterone in combination with estrogen and had really, really positive results in terms of feminization uh, around that. Just to be clear about progesterone and estrogen. Progesterone is not a requirement for feminization. In my understanding from um, Anastasia's, I guess, explanation around uh, progesterone's role in uh, hormone replacement therapy, that it can uh, deliver some results in the maturation of the breast tissue rather than its, I guess, initial growth. Which is to say that it may assist with the shape 
more than the size if that makes sense there's also been sort of i guess anecdotal evidence around uh progesterone assisting with uh feminization in terms of fat re redistribution and around uh particularly the hip area so in what anastasia was saying was that it's been really difficult to get a sort of definitive answer as to what progesterone's role specifically is in hormone replacement therapy because there hasn't been any sort of conclusive studies around that or there isn't enough data to support going okay we need to give this particular dose with this amount of estrogen for this period of time for this particular type of body in order to achieve a particular result now i am not a medical professional so i will encourage you if you are thinking about going on progesterone as well as part of your gender affirming care go and check out the video with anastasia i will put a link to that video at the end of this video so go ahead and click on that and let me know your thoughts and if you're deciding to go on progesterone or not did you have any hair loss since you started injections of the hormones no i did not have any hair loss so um, hormone replacement therapy will not get rid of any hair what it sometimes can do is like thin the hair a little bit particularly like on my body so like my chest area the hair here sort of disappeared mostly and then the hair on my arms and my underarms they sort of softened but if you're wanting to like remove hair um you've sort of gotta yeah do like either like laser or something like that to get rid of the hair because the hormones won't get rid of the hair unfortunately thank you so much this video was incredibly helpful what about my certificates with my old name when i've changed that how does that one work okay so this person is asking this question on the very very first video that we posted about how do you go ahead and change your name at the department of home affairs so once your name has been officially changed with the department of home affairs you can then uh, take the letter that they give you, the confirmation letter to say that, you know, your particulars have now changed and these now your official details. You can then take that to your bank, you can take that to your place of learning, you can take that letter along with your supporting ID documents uh, to your place whoever is issuing your certificate and ask for a reissue of that document uh, under your new name. Not all places will do this. I know sometimes uh, people have come up uh, with some difficulties around that because there's all sort of, I guess, administrative things happening in the background and once the thing is on the system, then they can't change it, then I don't know. This is all very technical and very annoying. But yes, you can take that letter with your documents and ask them to have it changed. There are specific procedures with different, I guess, institutions for it. Um, if you're doing this for your matrix certificate that you can do, um, I'm not sure about universities as well. So you'll have to inquire about that. All right, my lovelies, thank you so much for all of your questions. This was really awesome. You actually submitted quite a number of questions and I like that they were sort of focused in very particular areas. So this was really great. If you are not following me already, you can head over to social media and follow me here um, for next time when we do a Q&A and we'll post the announcement there and then you can ask all of your questions and I will do my best to answer them. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And if you are not already subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn the bell on for notifications to stay in the loop for upcoming videos. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Ciao.